Hey y'all, what's up? It is Roy here, and a little late in the week, but I thought I would do a Bobcat football breakdown after the 42-7 loss at Baylor. Um, I'm actually not going to be too negative in this video. One thing that obviously we all saw, we lost big, but I saw more positives in that video um, and in that game than I did negatives. Um, I saw a lot of improvements that hadn't been there, that were there, even though the score didn't reflect a positive level of play, there was good things. Uh, there Obviously, there are still struggles. There are still issues. There are still issues on the O-line. Um, pass blocking seemed to be much more improved. Um, Hatcher had, had time to settle a little bit in the pocket um, and complete a few more passes. Um, the run blocking, though, just, just wasn't there against a bigger better Baylor team. Um, uh, I think we had, what was it, two, four, two, Calvin Hill had 12 rushes for 41 yards. Um, that's not going to cut it. That's not going to cut it against anybody. Um, nothing, it does not, anything against Calvin. Uh, we've seen him, you know, make holes. We've seen him find holes. We've seen him get upfield and get the yardage. But against this just much, much faster Baylor team, it wasn't there. The line was not able to create the holes to get him space to run. Um, one of the other negatives, I guess I would say, is third down conversion. We were 4 or 14 on third down conversions. Um, there's no excuse for that, no matter who you're playing. Uh, you're not even at, at 33% on your third down conversions. I think fourth downs, we were 0 for 4, 1 for 5, something like that. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. We had 268 yards total offense. Um while that can win a few games here and there, that's not going to win very many games, no matter who you're playing. Um, one thing I can say, I've been very hard on Hatcher the first couple of weeks. Uh, in this game, I will say he looked better. He uh, seems to be de developing a bond with a few of his receivers a little bit. They seem to be getting on the same page. Some of those passes are there. Now, because of the O-line play, yes, he got a little more time. He was able to relax a little bit. But at the same time, he was forced to make a lot of short throws. And when you're playing a faster, uh, you know, better Baylor team, a team like that, um, you're going to catch the ball and you're going to get tackled. You're going to catch the ball and you're, you're not getting the yards after contact. You're not getting the big plays. You're getting small plays, quick receptions, which we saw. We, I mean, we set a new, we knew a new record. And you look at Ashton Hawkins, absolute monster on the day. 13 receptions, sets the new school record. Um, overall yardage just wasn't there, though, and that's because a lot of those passes were, were short, quick passes. that were. He was kind of the emergency outlet for uh, for Hatcher. They they definitely seem to be getting on a, on a good page. I think we're going to see more of that this coming week. Um, but congrats to Ashton on that. Congrats, man. That, that's a huge accomplishment, 13 catches. Let's hope we see that continue throughout the season, and, and maybe those numbers even go up. Um, one thing we did very, very well about was controlling the clock. We actually had more time of possession than Baylor did. Um, and I don't really know the last time I've seen that, even with our three and outs. Even, we had a lot of three and outs. But even with our three and outs, even with our, our, our quick um, you know, possession changes, we still managed to have more time with the ball than Baylor did. Now, we didn't do anything with it. We got into the red zone a few times and just pff, nothing. But... We controlled the clock. That was a good thing. Um, improvements. A uh, couple of couple that I noticed in particular, Levi Bell. Uh, seven tackles. Monster. Um, that's huge, especially against a Baylor team like that. He found a way to get to the ball and make those tackles. Cordell Rogers. Monster. Just tearing it up. Much improved. Uh, Cordell, Levi, man, y'all keep, keep fighting. Keep keep going at it. Uh, I love seeing the, the aggressiveness and, and making those plays. Um, as far as breaking down this upcoming week, I wanted to add that in there and talk about it a little bit. Uh, one thing that I don't think we're going to see is a lot. Um, you're not going to see much this game because we're going again, going in against a team that seems to be having an identity crisis. First off, are they Houston Baptist or are they Houston Christian? I, I don't know. Like I saw a post where it says HBU, but then they say HCU. I don't know. Who knows? They're one of them. Either way, Houston Baptist, Houston Christian, either way, they're going to lose, period. But they are fast. I will talk about that. Um, I watched some, I watch, I've watched their game film throughout the season, what I've been able to look at. Um, the 
potential for big plays is there, and they're going to have some big plays against Texas State. They are sneaky quick, um, and they're going to get behind our, our secondary a couple of times. They're going to get a couple of big plays. Their running back is shifty. They, he's quick, man. He's, he's, he, he hits a hole, and he's just boom. I mean, he's got some track speed, man. He just he flies out there. Y'all be, be watching. Watch number five, Reynolds. Watch number six, Mahdi. These two are going to make an impact for Houston Baptist. Um, no matter how well we play, those two are going to make plays. They are ball players. They have the speed to play at this level, and they're going to make an impact. Do I think it's going to be a huge impact, game-changing impact? No. You're playing a much bigger uh, overall, quicker Texas State team with more depth. You're, you're not going to see a positive result on that for Houston Baptist. But we will get caught sleeping on a play or two. They will get behind us. I hope I'm wrong. Just speaking from what I saw off, off film, they're quick. Like I said, Reynolds and Mahdi are big players. These guys um, are going to make plays. They're going to make things happen. Our linebackers are going to need to stay home. Um, I've seen a few times throughout the year where our linebackers are very aggressive to make the play. That being the case, they, they come in, they end up, you end up having both linebackers hitting one hole. You have all three linebackers hitting one hole and the guy just slips right by them. That's something that we're going to have to stay home to limit those big plays out of the backfield, those quick runs, those, those just flying out of the backfield. Our linebackers are going to have to stay home. Um, a couple of things offensively. I think we're absolutely going to have to establish the run against a much, much smaller Houston Baptist team. They, If you look at them uh, on film, you'll see them on the field Saturday. They're a small team, of course. Um, our O-line, if we don't absolutely dominate this team, then it's going to make for a long season because we're not going to play another team as small as Houston Baptist the rest of the year. And our O-line, if no other game, this game – should be able to take that line, drive them back, make holes big enough for semi trucks, and let our, let Calvin Hill and, and and our other backs get free and get some yardage. Um, I would expect a big running game this week, um, but we need to balance that. Let's use this game as a chance to see some big plays. We've seen a lot of short passes this year. Even the plays that have gone for bigger yardage have been 15 yard passes with a 50 yard run afterwards. Let's see Hatcher get some shots downfield. Give him some time in the backfield to throw some accurate passes, not just passes where he's laying it out there and the receiver's going and getting it. I want to see Hatcher throw some accuracy this week. I want to see him hit our receivers downfield and then the big play happen. Um, let's use this as a week to let's run the score up a little bit. Get the Bobcat fans, the Bobcat faithful excited. Put some points on the board against a much, much overmatched Houston Baptist team. Uh, and let's come away with a big W. Um, overall, if I'm going to go with a score prediction, I'm going to say uh, something along the lines of, uh, I'm going to give them a little, little bit more respect than what I was originally thinking. I'm going to say something along the lines of uh, 41-17 Texas State. Um, again, I do think Houston Baptist will break a couple of big plays on us that will result in points. Um, so I'm going to give them two touchdowns and a field goal. Um, possibly 41-10. Maybe they don't get that second touchdown. Really, we'll see how the uh, defense comes out and if the linebackers stay home and control that running game. Um, but overall, look for a big win from Texas State. Um, hopefully, we'll get to see the offense open up a little bit. We'll see the offensive line kind of settle in and control that line of scrimmage. Um, and we'll get to see some really good positives. So hope to see y'all there. Hope you're there supporting the Bobcats. Be loud. Holler at me if you see me. This is the breakdown. I'm done. Eat them up, cats.